I recently read Storyworthy by Matthew Dix. Your life is the sum of your stories. If you can tell your stories in a compelling way, people will enjoy your company and feel more connected to you. Author Matthew Dix has won 36 Moth Story Slams, a highly competitive storytelling competition in cities around the world. When I listen to his stories, which you can find on the Storyworthy The Book YouTube channel, I'm captivated and think about his stories for several days. Dick says there are many secrets to storytelling, but there is one fundamental truth above all others that must be understood before a storyteller can ever be successful. And that is all great stories tell the story of a five second moment in a person's life. The five second moment Dix is referring to is the moment you realize your life is never gonna be the same. It's the moment you fell in love with your partner or fell out of love with an ex. It's the moment you realize you are capable of more than you thought at mile 25 of a marathon or after acing a test. It's a moment you knew your business idea was gonna succeed or the moment you realized that you wanted to change careers. Without these moments of realization, our lives would lack meaning and significance. The same is true for stories. Everything in a story must build up to a five second moment. The key to making any five second moment of realization or transformation seem significant is to start a story in stark contrast to the five second moment. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones starts the film as a non-believer who doubts the Ark of the Covenant has any religious power. But then by the end of the film, he has enough faith in the power of God to close his eyes as the Nazis open the Ark of the Covenant and have their faces melted off their skulls. In the first Jurassic Park film, Grant, the lead paleontologist, scares a kid with a fossilized velociraptor claw and asks his partner why she'd ever want to have kids. But later in the film, Grant is stranded with two kids in Jurassic Park and is embracing them like a father. In Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise's character starts the movie as an arrogant sports agent who is engaged to a superficial woman, but ends the movie a humble man who is in love with someone who is the opposite of the woman he was about to marry. In one of Matthew Dick's best stories, he starts the story feeling dreadfully alone and ends it with his friends chanting his name as he's rolled into the emergency room after a nearly fatal car crash. Dick says, you must start your story as one version of yourself and end as something new. I was once this, but now I am this. I once thought this, but now I think this. I once felt this, but now I feel this. After you've identified the five second moment you wanna share, you have the end of your story. Find the opposite of that, and you have the start of your story. Now you must tell the events that took you from who you were to who you are now using three compelling storytelling techniques. Start with action, misdirect, and pause before the big reveal. First, start with action. Director Christopher Nolan started The Dark Knight in the middle of an intense bank robbery. George Lucas started Star Wars A New Hope with two starships racing through space. These movies didn't waste time getting the audience involved in the action and wondering what was going to happen next. Do the same with your stories. Start with phrases like, yesterday I was running from, or last week I was in the middle of my work meeting when. If I were to tell you about a kayaking trip I took, I'd start the story halfway down the river, just before realizing that I was heading towards a waterfall. Compelling storytelling technique number two, misdirect. Before explaining an event in your story, Tell the audience your plan, then derail your plan. The filmmakers of the first Ocean's Eleven film use a technique by explaining Danny Ocean's plan to rob a Las Vegas casino in great detail so the audience felt they were a part of the heist. Then nothing went according to plan, and the audience felt the same suspense and frustration as the characters in the film. Another way you can be a master of misdirection is to lead into events of your story by making false assumptions. For example, you could say, now that I've reached my goal, I could finally relax and then immediately introduce a stressful event. The last way to misdirect your audience is to hint at something that's about to happen and then reveal something they'd never guess. In one of Matthew Dick's stories in which he's begging for gas money, he says, I see my crumpled McDonald's uniform on the back seat and I suddenly have an idea. At this point, the audience needs to guess what he'll do next and they probably won't guess that he's going to go put on that uniform, knock on a stranger's door, and pretend to collect money for Ronald McDonald children's charities. Dix calls the act of hinting at an event and surprising the audience dropping breadcrumbs. It's a powerful misdirection technique because you give the audience just enough information to start guessing what's gonna happen, but not enough to guess right. 
Every time your audience thinks one thing and you deliver something completely different, you pique their interest for at least a minute. Do this over and over and you have an audience hanging on your every word. Once you've worked your way to the end of your story, you may be tempted to quickly reveal the big moment because you're excited to tell your audience about your realization of transformation, but don't. Instead, delay, delay, delay. Make it seem like the timeline in your story has stopped and explain the situation seconds before the big moment in vivid detail. In Dick's McDonald's charity thief story, he explains the situation just before knocking on a door to ask for money and says, I'm wearing my McDonald's manager uniform, blue shirt, blue pants, blue tie. Dix is adding unnecessary detail and repeating words to put off his big reveal and build up suspense. When you delay before your big reveal, it's like you're handing a child a nicely wrapped present on Christmas morning and telling them they can't open it until their sister wakes up and mom gets her coffee and everyone else is in the living room. When the moment comes to finally open up the big moment, and your moment is something deeply personal and vulnerable, yet relatable, you won't only have a memorable story, you will also have established a strong connection between you and the people you're sharing your story with. That was the core message that I gathered from Storyworthy by Matthew Dix. This book is loaded with great storytelling techniques, and it's incredibly fun to read. I highly recommend this book. If you'd like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you've already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.